Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would do a series all about inflation, considering that the whole nation is gripped talking about inflation at the moment, given a cost of living crisis. So the first video that I want to do on that, or I suppose the first video I did on that was inflation expectations. But this video, I want it to all be about um, why it is inflation targeting countries, so the US and the UK are notable examples of this, why they tend to aim for a 2% inflation target rather than a 0% one. So what's quite common is if you were to ask anyone this, there's one answer they would give, and it is a correct answer, but there's a lot more to it than that. So the main reason people give is, well, if the they were ever gonna miss their target, so go under, then they run a risk of going into deflation. And deflation in itself is not a great thing. I know it might sound amazingly because price is falling, so things are cheaper. But what we actually find happens in reality is that if prices are falling, people actually put off their spending. They delay even further in the hopes that they can end up getting it even cheaper. So I suppose a kind of real life example of this is when it's coming up to, I don't know, Prime Day, people tend to put off their spending because they're hoping they can get what they want cheaper in Prime Day. Although I never seem to be able to get anything cheaper in Prime Day, but there we have it. So a similar argument is given for deflation. If prices are falling, people will put off their spending in hopes that they can buy it at a later date when it's cheaper. Problem is, this is kind of like a perpetual cycle. Doing that lowers prices even further, and then people further put off their spending, and therefore we've got this negative cycle going on, and it's really bad for the economy because people aren't buying things, people aren't spending. So that is a correct reasoning. That's absolutely fine, um, but there's more to it than that. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is all to do with the labour market. So in sort of like downturns, bad pe periods of sort of like bad economic growth, we tend to find that employers need to make cuts. Now, they're very, very hesitant slash kind of in legal terms can't uh, in willing to cut your nominal wages. So that means if you're paid, let's say £20 an hour, they're going to cut that down to £18 an hour. So the reason why is first, firstly, employees would kick off about that. Um, people don't particularly like feeling as if like they've actually seen their paycheck number four, but also there's like labor laws and contract law. So in the sense that you can't just suddenly lower the amount you're paying somebody, but they get less of a rebuttal or less um, of a fight if things fall in real terms and things are able to fall in real terms if there's inflation. So this is an indirect way of being able to cut someone's pay in real terms because what you can do as an employer is you can just not give them a pay rise and therefore inflation is slowly eroding away at the employee's purchasing power. Now you might say to yourself, hang on a minute, I don't understand that. If an employer needs to make cuts sort of ASAP, how is that going to help them? And you're right, that doesn't help them in that sense, in which case they probably have to lay off workers. But if there's a bit of a time frame that they've, they can wait, what they can just do is they can essentially not give pay rises, right? And then therefore they've cut the amount they're paying their employees in real terms, but hopefully they are able to see an increase in their revenues because they can put their prices up with inflation. So essentially what they're getting isn't being affected by the inflation, but what they're paying out hasn't had to go up. Um, so they win in that respect and they tend to find that that receives a lot less um, kind of like arguments or people fighting back because they're not seeing the actual number on their paycheck fall, even if in real terms that is happening. Now, you'll see a lot of arguments happening on the news about how maybe doctors are striking or teachers are striking because they're not happy the fact that their pay has um, essentially fallen in real terms. So it does get to a point where people do fight back, but normally you'll find that there's a little bit more leeway in terms of how they how much they can get away with that. And then if the economic situation improves, they can go back to giving pay rises and so on and so forth. So it's, um, yeah, it's a less of a dramatic thing and it's quite an indirect approach for them. So it actually is really helpful in terms of the labor market if inflation isn't already at 0%, because if it's at 0%, they've kind of got nowhere to go with this. And in which case, then they're just gonna have to lay off their workers. And in which case we see an increase in the unemployment rate, which again, isn't good. And then the third reason is 
there's kind of arguments out there that the way that inflation is measured is actually overstating the inflation rate in the economy or in reality and part of the argument behind that is this idea that well if price has risen but the product is the same then in which case you've got inflation but actually sometimes what it's missing is actually there's been an increase in in the quality for example so that's one of the reasons why the price has gone up um it's because the quality of the product has actually improved so it's not the exact same product but that's failing to be measured so there's unmeasured quality improvements in the measure of inflation um, and therefore if that's actually the case and we're aiming for a zero percent inflation rate and we achieve that on the measured approach then actually what's happening in reality is there's actually deflation because the product itself has improved and then we run into the problems that we've had in the first argument in terms of what's happening with deflation now in the us um, they are fully aware of this so what the fed are said to do they're said to target an inflation rate which actually accounts for this so it's bringing in a measure of substitution bias but even then there's arguments that it's not particularly perfect and there is still some upward bias even in that estimate for inflation and then the last reason is to do with uh, monetary policy in terms of how they set interest rates so it's argued that they cannot set nominal interest rates so for example when they set the base rate or when they set the fed rate they can't set them to be below zero, they can't set them to be negative. And part of the reason for that, if that is the case and they set a negative rate, then you essentially would not be willing to put your money into banks, you would just go and put it in a safe or hold on to it or put it under your mattress. Because if it's negative, what you're essentially having to do is pay the bank to have your money and people just wouldn't do that. So this being unable to set nominal interest rates below zero is what's known as the zero lower bound. But what they're actually caring about is what they can put real interest rates as. So they set the nominal rate, but that goes on to affect the real interest rate. So the reason why is your real interest rate is your nominal interest rate take away inflation. So if inflation is above zero, let's say inflation is two um, percent and we set nominal interest rates at zero percent, which is the lowest in theory we should go. I mean, Japan had a spell of going into negative nominal interest rates, but normally we say there's a zero lower bound in which case the real interest rate is negative two and this real interest rate is probably the most important because that's really how we affect people and then we can stimulate growth to kind of bring the economy back so if inflation is too low we haven't got much room of where we can go in terms of how low we can get real interest rates um, and that's why you'd see when we had the financial crisis of 2008 and for the years after that interest rates in nominal terms was so so low they were kept very close to zero because there wasn't any like real firm we couldn't really go much lower um and if maybe we had a little bit of higher level inflation and then for we could have had our real interest rates even more negative it is potentially argued that we could have stimulated um growth and got ourselves sort of like out of recession much faster than we did. all that is trying to point out really is that having an inflation rate above zero enables the Fed or the Monetary Policy Committee in the UK to lower real interest rates by more and hopefully that would be more effective at um, sort of like having a kind of rapid recovery or encouraging growth. Now even though I've said all of these things the kind of like target that the inflation level should be placed at is disputed um, we kind of settled on two percent for now but it is still heavily disputed so there's no kind of right right answer on what the inflation target should be apart from there does seem to be some kind of consensus that um it's it's kind of dangerous to try and have a zero percent inflation target so i hope that's given you a bit more information as to why you are commonly seeing inflation targeting countries targeting something around two percent rather than zero percent bye guys